You're not a dove. Hey! It's the biggest dove I've ever seen. What is that thing doing up there? <laughs> what a weird bird. All right, well, y'all go see it here. All right, see ya. They said they got dudes down in the bottom down there, which doesn't affect us too much right here, but it affects what they're gonna glass. I like this part of the game out here in South Dakota. It's a lot more open. You can see a lot of stuff. I like seeing deer. I, I like this country. It's beautiful. And I'm expecting deer to stand up out of this brush down here in front of us or on the opposite hillside over there. Saw a really big deer here a couple years ago, and uh, it's a place to see a lot of deer sometimes. <clears throat> There's good ag up the drainage about a mile and a half from here, so it's a great place for deer to come down and filter in, in bed during the day. There's big bucks around, not a ton of them, but usually there's a lot of deer. <clears throat> Last year we came here and conditions were really dry. The year before that, it was really wet. And I think we're kind of somewhere in the middle this year. It's not what you would call extreme drought, but I think it's uh, drier than ideal or however they rate it. It's like a yellow on the scale, you know, so just a little bit in drought. Um, water might be a factor, but last year was extreme drought and water wasn't that big of a deal so um, I'm thinking I'm not going to be too concerned about scouting water unless I see deer going to it from here which I can see one two three maybe four water sources from this spot um, but yeah we got about 45 minutes till sunset we're just going to sit here and watch for deer and see if we can't learn something this is a fun time in the trip because you don't know anything outside of just what you know about deer Right, so whitetails in general are going to bed in thickets and they're going to move to food. Well, we have to figure out each year what the thicket is and what the food is, and uh, that's why it's a fun night because we just haven't seen haven't seen a deer in South Dakota yet on this trip. We just got here a few hours ago, so the first deer will be a win, and then from there we're just going to start making inferences and trying to make a plan for the rest of the week. That deer will end up on public at some point in time. We're gonna get out of here kind of smooth and quiet while it's still light and we can walk pretty easy. I don't know if we'll hunt him right away, but there's a good chance that somebody this week, if they come spend some time over here, will bed that sucker on some public ground and we can get a shot at him because he's big. That's like the same class as the biggest buck that we've ever hunted here in South Dakota. In the first few days, we walked some miles, found a few deer, just jumped a fence on the public, and saw a few dudes. Nothing like walking around at 7.30 in the morning with your bow. Tyler, however, found a buck hole and even shot him one. After a couple days with no shooters spotted, it was time to work a little harder than I originally thought to find a nice deer. Just plotted it out, it's like a mile and three quarters. 
to where we want to be. I'm a tracker, see how fast we actually do it. The ag's not as good as we hoped, but this place is bad at the moment. There's a lot of cover. We're gonna see a lot of deer tonight. I'll scoot up a little bit right up there. Where we can see down that bottom. They might just be like a three-year-old, but he's a, a big ten-point. Oh, that's a big daddy. Oh. It was good where we were. It was, our deer were on their feet when we got there. I had like 545 on, there's just deer in a cauldron down the bottom just eating. Farm deer. I had one up at six something. We're just a few minutes before shooting light here in this way back place that we've been hunting a little bit and uh, came back to the same spot. I don't know how confident I am in this hit but it's a really good place. And I think that there's a lot more deer in here. What we have to have is a buck come in range. We have a decent chance of that in this spot.
Well, this uh, field that we drew over here to check, it's a little State Department food plot. It was corn last year, and uh, all the corn was gone. Now, this year, it's turnips, and deer are hitting turnips right now. It's about the only green food around outside of a stray alfalfa field. So that is encouraging. And honestly, it's 913. We might go walk the edge and just see how much use it's getting and see if there's any scrapes in particular. There's a scrape on this one right there. That licking branch has a scrape. One of the things you end up doing when you're saddle hunting is hanging in like sketchy trees. This tree is not like dangerous sketchy, it's just kind of difficult and kind of warmer jawed. This tree you wouldn't hang a lock on in, but that's why it's good. Because deer are not used to people being in this tree or any of them around here. There's no like tree stand trees. So we should have the good surprise on them. We're actually hunting a turnip plot. There's purple top turnips and daikon radishes out there. It's planted by the state on the back side of this WMA. I'm already feeling like we're gonna get snuck in on because we scouted this thing and the deer are hitting it pretty good. We are over here like four days ago. There's turnips pulled up out of the ground, chewed on, there's tops bitten off a lot of places. So it's by far the coldest day that we've had hunting here. So we expect these deer to be here fairly early. And uh, everything's on the menu tonight. I probably won't shoot a, like a one-year-old buck, but if a big doe gives me an opportunity, I'm gonna smoke her because I did not kill an elk this year, which means I have to kill at least five deer to feed my family. And uh, South Dakota deer are tasty. They are steak deer is what I would like to say, especially the big bucks. You know, big bucks have the most meat, and I'd like to shoot one of those, but a big doe is cool too.
a weird thing to do a interview in a tree in the dark with the light on. <laughs> but those bucks just worked around and got downwind after last light and left. And it's our last day in South Dakota. Last evening, this last hunt. Um, you gotta go home to your family sometimes and I miss them. I gave it a good go. There's no false winds, as I like to say. It, it stinks. I mean, I was I was ready to shoot a doe at 3:45 today, if given the opportunities, and we never saw a slick head one. We had those two young bucks that gave me, a, you know, perfect shots, and uh, it's just not what I want to shoot. Um, I'd rather shoot a doe than a young buck like that. It's just kind of what I wanted to do, and I'm willing to go home without a deer. <clears throat> And that's what happened. I had a shot right at last light on that buck right there. And I drew my bow back. And um, I don't know if my peep is rolling all the way around. I need, to, I need to shoot it and make sure. But I couldn't see my pin. And I could see my pin just looking at it. But when I put it up, my peep up to my eye, I couldn't find my pin. And that big buck was at 23 yards. He was being aggressive towards those other bucks. So I gave him a little snort wheeze. It's early in the year, but I thought it might work. And sure enough, they all ended up working their way over here. They weren't, you know, mad mad, but it was a noise that they knew and, and were willing to come investigate. <clears throat> and uh, I uh, didn't take that shot because I just wasn't sure where the air would land and it's just not where you want to be, you know? So, uh, gonna not punch a tag which is tough. I, I usually always find a way to shoot something and uh, makes me sad that I didn't. But it's a beautiful place. Tonight was an awesome night. Got to watch deer and uh, it's going to be a great deer season either way. I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to hunt. Have the vitality it takes to climb trees and, and endure tough situations and long walks. But uh, to kind of go back and reflect as to why I didn't or was unable to make a deer go down on this trip. It's always tough. It's always tough when you put a lot of work into something because it's like society nowadays tells you work hard and, and you know you'll get rewarded and that's not how things work man. Like there's a lot of people myself I feel like included who work really hard at things and it's that, that a lot of times has nothing to do with it. It just depends on God's will in your life. And if you believe that, then it's a whole lot easier to to take situations like this. It's like, well, this is what was meant to happen. And I'm, I'm at peace with it. So we're going to get down, warm up, and go eat some good food to uh, fuel ourselves for the trip home. Got a lot more deer to hunt.